from a, one person. But uh, a disability is a mismatch in um, uh, the interaction between that person and the building of a museum of the, or the website of the museum or the staff of the museum or the programs of the museum or the labels next to the art pieces, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so as a museum, you are responsible to take away these mismatches. Um, and I think it's important that uh, everybody with or without disability can uh, visit the museum online and offline um, independently and equal um, and uh, has yeah accessibility to or has access to the collection and that everybody is um, received in a hospitable way. So hospitality, equality and independently th those three words i have always in my mind with everything what i do and um but you can only work on um accessibility if you uh if your staff the minds of your staff um is it? If your staff is conscious uh, about this subject, that they realize how important accessibility is. So you have to put a lot of effort in that. And uh, you always have to work with the, uh, the people for who it is. So everything what you make, what, what you program, all the ideas, uh, uh, everything should be um, uh, advised by or and tested by the people for who it is. That's very important. So, and then I uh, work for, uh, with different types of accessibility. So you have physical accessibility, and that is how how do you uh, how how's the building? Uh, so um, are there elevators and ramps, and how's the light? Um, can I read the labels? Um, the signing, et cetera. Um, and um, uh, the accessibility of the uh, programs. Sorry, my doorbell is ringing. Uh, accessibility to the content. So that's, are your programs? And um, yeah, that you actually, that you have access to the art. Um, uh, financial accessibility. Um, is it possible? Can people afford it to come in? Uh, digital accessibility, how's your website, your app? Um, and then uh, social accessibility, how are you being received by the people in the, in the museum? And then the last but not least is representation. You can make your museum totally accessible, but representation is everything. And then I mean, uh, in the staff, that you recognize yourself in the staff, but also in the collection. And um, we started now with a very interesting project that we um, uh, researched the whole collection on people with a disability. So what is made by someone with a disability or what uh, shows someone with a disability uh, in all our collection through the ages. And we... Um, uh, uh, so we collect that and we, we uh, learn from how, how we're people, how we were looking at that time at people with a disability and also what were our labels, the terminolo terminology. Um, and there are words which you cannot uh, use anymore, but which were written like 50 years ago by a curator. So um, together with with people with disabilities, we rewrite, rewrite these labels. And uh, we are also, we're planning to share that um, uh, with other museums internationally. Um, and I think it's very important that people with a disability can recognize themselves in the collection. And it learns us a lot about how we uh, yeah, looked at people with a disability through the ages and about inequality and how we learn by that uh, from that now. Um, so I, I, I just told you six aspects of accessibility. 
of uh, uh, yeah, accessibility. And that's, I, I work uh, on those uh, six parts for all different uh, target groups. So I can give you some examples. Is that yes, what please. You want to know? Yep. Yeah, sure. Um, so for example, for programs, um, so that's accessibility to the content. Uh, we have tours for um, people with dementia, people who are uh, uh, blind or have low vision in Dutch sign language for deaf people. Um, we have sensory sensitive evenings, sorry, evenings for people who are sensory sensitive. That's the right word in English. Um, we have all these things, what I say is for adults, but we also organize it for families with children. Um, and we also do private tours for people, for children who have special needs. So they cannot go in the regular family tour, but uh, families can um, book a private tour. And then our tour guides are trained just to really focus on that, what that child needs. And then they get a private tour as a family. Uh, uh, and but we also have tours for uh, people who live in Amsterdam in a neighborhood and who feel lonely and who want to um, yeah, know, uh, get to know people in the same neighborhood. And so if, uh, we, uh, uh, we have a bus and it, it, it picks you up somewhere. And then you go with 15 people to our museum every month for three times. And uh, with the same group of people, and you get a drink, and um, uh, and you get a tour. But in the tour, it's all about the conversation. So we really want you to, um, yeah. We hope that the that the art helps you to um, meet other people, and you get each other's contact details, and we make a group picture. Um, yeah. So that's an, a nice way of using art using the collection for um yeah to meet other people but it, it's also a nice bridge to uh, art and um uh, how you feel well-being mm -hmm. art and well-being um because we uh for example we have night watch on tour is the name so we have a uh, the night watch of rembrandt which is four by five meters we um, made a copy of it with a frame around it. We have four of those and they travel uh, from a care home for elderly to another care home and stays every, everywhere for two weeks. So the people in the care home have their own night watch for two weeks when you can come very close and you can touch it. And uh, it's really cool. Um, but also, for example, we work together with hospitals. And if you, when you are in an MRI scan, uh, then you see pictures of uh, the Rijksmuseum. And you hear also music. We work together with the uh, Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra. So you hear that music and you see art just to be away from that scan. Uh, so we, we cannot make people better but we can make them feel better but yeah i think that that's very important that 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 people realize that art um has that power has that impact on people and um so that as a museum you connect art and people but art also connects people to people um, so it's so much more than just a museum with some art pieces. Um, okay, well, shall I just, do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yes, even though, I mean, it was uh, very quick, but very sharp, and I like your motto mm -hmm. about uh, <laughs> art not making people better, but uh, making them feeling better. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have very uh, two very uh, quick questions. Uh, first one is, uh, you mentioned the project uh, when you uh, re 
recollect your collection on the basis of uh, some attitude, a new attitude towards uh, people with special needs or disabilities. So when did you start this one and how does it go? Do you uh, ask your uh, audience and people with uh, different uh, disabilities and special needs to come and to value or revalue or to rewatch these pieces? And another yes. question was, how many are you? Because you're doing so much and is the inclusive department of Rijksmuseum a big one? Or... Um, no, I'm, a, I'm alone, but I work 32 hours. <laughs> uh, and of course you do everything with other departments. So I just told you about content and, um, but I didn't tell anything yet about digital accessibility and I, I work, for that, I work together, of course, with our digital apart, uh, departments. Um, and for the physical uh, accessibility, I work together with our uh, people from, yeah, who work for the building. So, of course, I, I do everything together with everyone. But that's why it's so important that everybody knows how important it is. So that's what, what I uh, told you at the beginning, that I put a lot of effort in that so that people come with ideas themselves. Um, and for example, because we, we have this app of the Rijksmuseum with uh, a lot of audio tours in there and information. And um, in the audio tours, they were first, you could only um, yeah, listen like, like the, the, the old audio tour, but now we have it also in video, in uh, Dutch sign language um, and everything in text for people who are hard of hearing. And with extra um, uh, descriptions for mm -hmm. people who are blind or have low vision, and without any extra noises for people who are sensory sensitive. So that I like that when we, it's, it's our app. So you want the, the Rijksmuseum is proud of the app. It has all our stories, but then you make that app accessible for everyone. But your first question about. Um, uh, yeah, our collection. Uh, I hired someone for two days in a week, and she is part of our terminology working group. We already have that group for a few years because of our slavery exhibition. We also had to uh, yeah, change a lot of terms. Um, but now she is especially for uh, this subject, disabilities. And um, she, for, for every term, so the term deaf, uh, uh, for example, she talks with a, yeah, a group of uh, like 10 people of, of deaf people, um, uh, yeah, to talk about this subject. And it's also, uh, she writes about the history, what, what, what did we say in the past and why is that not good anymore? And, uh, but of course, this can also be, it, this will also change. Maybe in 10 years, we have to change terms again. Uh, but it's important that we uh, collect all that information. So we don't throw away old information. It, you can always look that up in the, on the website. But on the labels in the museum, it has to be correct how it is now. And... Um, uh, yeah, we had an evening uh, two weeks ago and then she, she did a reading about this subject uh, and she showed some, some uh, art pieces of the museum and she told us about that history and about the terms. And it was so interesting. There were people with and without disabilities and, um, and someone said who was in a, in a wheelchair uh, that he never knew when he was young or when he, he even studied art history and he never learned so he was never uh, taught somewhere that there were artists in the past with a disability um so and that would give if he would have known when he was young it would give him more self-power uh so i think it's really important that um museums show this it's a representation
uh, heard about how Rex Museum works with uh, collection accessibility. So they try to reconsider the way uh, the way uh, the way they present their collection. The digital accessibility, the accessibility of the website and uh, the app accessibility, the physical accessibility. So the accessibility of the building, financial accessibility. This is something that we always forget about, but it is important. So the uh, so the affordability of going to a museum and um, finally uh, representation accessibility whether we recognize ourselves in art in the museum collection in what we are shown and representation also in terms of staff i think that alona is going to talk about that about her experience uh, in garage and tretyakov gallery So um, I would ask my colleagues to show some uh, photos from Reich's Museum. So this is a story about sensor programs. Caitlin mentioned that this is well the pearl of the collection, the Night Watch, and that group that she mentioned. Another picture, please. Another photo please and this is uh, a tour for um, blind and or, or visually impaired people so if you have any questions uh, she asked me to provide her contacts to you so unfortunately she was not able to uh, be physically with us today and Evgenia Kisilova although uh, the Pushkin Museum uh, concludes the uh, inclusivity museum today so she could not come to Vixa but she joins us online so can we uh, bring Evgenia on the screen oh yes thank you do you hear us good morning everyone good morning Nika So, Evgenia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. This is a very inspiring uh, experience of Re Rex Museum. I believe this is something that uh, would be speakers, all uh, subsequent speakers would be based on, and what Caitlin uh, mentioned as uh, social inclusivity and accessibility may seem the simplest solution compared to architectural accessibility or ramps but it is often the cornerstone uh, problem for the guests to feel comfortable within the space of the cultural institutions and when we thought about this topic of the institutional development of an inclusivity we considered this topic as the key one because over 10 to 15 uh, over the past 10 to 15 years uh, the development of this dialogue about in inclusivity uh, goes has been going along the line uh, be open be accessible but if we look at uh, certain specifics of the infrastructure uh, financial uh, technical uh, difficulties how can they overnight become socially open and accessible is one of the biggest challenges because one thing is to install ramps and uh, it will change the architectural accessibility but how can you retrain a big number of staff teaching them different ethics of communications is a is a major challenge uh, especially in the russian context so Thus, I decided to focus on that in my presentation and how we address this problem in our Pushkin Museum. In my view, it, it cannot be resolved once and for all. It's an ongoing process. So we need to make uh, the same efforts over and over again because there are hundreds of people working for the museum 
uh, who are constantly rotating. Uh, some um, leave for several uh, after several months. So, and all these people need to be able to react to specific situations in the right way. And the Accessible Museum program that uh, came to being in 2016 uh, devoted exactly to this. It has been uh, it had been the result of our work with uh, people with deaf uh, people who are deaf people who have developmental uh, challenges. So, and normally the someone from the foundation of the people with special needs would write to the director and then uh, we would uh, allocate a guide to take all those people uh, through whatever barriers they, they, they could find. So essentially it was uh, manual control and so we decided uh, to organize our museum in such a way that people with disabilities could use this or that service independently so there is a number of groups and directions now within the accessible museum there are programs for families for individuals and all this implies great involvement of the whole of the staff of the Pushkin Museum. We are constantly in touch with our colleagues uh, in the branches, including the new ones in Vladikavkaz, Tomsk, uh, Kaliningrad, uh, Tom, uh, Nizhny Novgorod. This is how we stay in touch with our employees. Talking about the front line, normally these are the people who are present in the halls and of the museum, the wardens, uh, people of the senior generation. These museum at attendants normally look after a compliance uh, with, with the rules and we would uh, face face that mindset outdated social mi mindset who would look upon uh, disability as a medical condition and they could be either full of pity and compassion or condescendence and we had to run a series of meetings with them just to take them through it to explain how people take that why they take it like this and whether the attitude can be changed so uh, in order to run those meetings with museum attendants you need to have uh, small groups meeting right before their shift be begins. There is no way to uh, bring them all together at once. They work uh, in different shifts, different days. They are always busy. They begin very early. They are responsible for the works uh, of arts uh, in, in their area of responsibility. So we would have to, to run uh, operational meet meetings every now and then. For example, we have a new map of uh, uh, sensor security, uh, what are sensor risks, why it is important for some people, and the most important thing being uh, availability of the information. And even if they know all ins and outs of a service, uh, they don't have to know that they need to be able to direct people to the source of the information. So we also had a program to teach our attendants the basics of the sign language uh, when we, uh, where we also teach uh, spe special terms like Italian patios and such like. 
uh, to make sure that it's all very well uh, presented, uh, shown in rapid and slow mo. Our Pushkin Museum still awaits major reconstruction. Uh, lifts and ramps are forbidden at the moment for the sake of uh, heritage preservation. So we use different uh, devices and contraptions to make people with uh, mobility issues uh, to feel comfortable. So, and we have the challenge of uh, t teaching uh, security staff who are constantly changing uh, to to, ma to make sure how this uh, they know how this works and what they do in case of a failure. We also run trainings uh, on working with guests who are blind or who are accompanied by guide dogs, which uh, was the most delicate issues, raising most questions from the attendants and other staff. They didn't know how to work with uh, guide dogs. They, uh, they were afraid to imagine a dog in a hall where Bruegel's or Botticelli paintings are. We just demonstrated to them that there was nothing to be afraid of, that this is our everyday routine. And we have uh, many guests with guide dogs in the Pushkin Museum, and there, there are no problems whatsoever. There are a number of tactile programs, and for each exhibition that open, opens up in the Pushkin Museum, we, we ran a kinesthetic uh, awareness program, uh, how uh, people like that uh, should be communicated with, how uh, uh, hygienic norms and sanitary norms are to be observed. So we want to make sure that uh, everyone among our staff knows about that. So we need to make a, an extra effort for the people to be aware of that. So once certain programs or projects are prepared, they have to be accompanied by clear and sufficient communications with every staff member to make sure they know who to address in case of a problem. Another important thing is uh, when we are preparing certain projects for the museum, we always engage our staff in, in terms of uh, rules. If, if there is a performance, for example, in, in a certain hall, then the uh, respective attendant uh, has to be present there during that performance or rehearsals. So uh, we, we had we had one um, at attendant uh, present during the rehearsals of um, more than herring. Uh, performance and uh, also we have people from departments who are not connected to inclusivity and accessibility so emerging them into the context we involve them in this work we include them in in the cultural context of the museum's life our curators and art researchers are also involved in the social agenda. By way of concluding my presentation, I'd like to say that for intermuseum practices, we have uh, an international inclusive festival that has been running since, since 2017. Uh, it will be its fifth time this year. It's normally a hybrid format online offline being broadcast to, to various uh, social networks this year it's called the map of vulnerabilities we wanted to use this term in order to feed it into the social dimension to find the points of 
uh, brittleness to be the points of growth. We put together all the documentation and description of all the performances, lectures, dialogues that have been run within the Accessible Museum program in the Pushkin Museum over five years. So we made a gist of it, a QR code on your screen uh, will lead you to download this document. I believe that this is very important because inclusivity and accessibility uh, has to be developing in Russia and there was a lack of a document that could be the reference point. We believe that uh, the historical part, the academic approach to that uh, has to be there, has to be preserved and worked out. So the festival continues today and tomorrow. At 4 p.m. Uh, Moscow time today, we will have a direct uh, live broadcast with uh, Marina Loshak and Christopher uh, Hofsteiner from Biennale Agency and Anna Gore when we will talk about the concept of sustainability impacting on the life of the contemporary museum. You are all welcome to join this broadcast. So uh, the festival runs through the 28th of November. And I also would like to inform you about the Summer School of Inclusive Practices that has been running since 2018 in the Pushkin Museum. Sadly, uh, it has gone totally online with the pandemic, but on the other hand, it expanded participation. So uh, we, we used to have 20 people offline, now we have 40 people online this year, for example. We also entered into the contract with the High School of Economics and people of the, of the summer schools uh, receive uh, certificates from the High School of Economics, which is a great honor. So I invite you all to join the Accessible Museum program in the social networks. Regrettably, I cannot tell you in detail about all the programs and projects today yet i'm i'm delighted to stay in touch with you and available for any questions thank you evgenia thank you i'm hopeful that you could uh, spend a few moments with us uh, and once uh, all the speakers have delivered their presentations uh, you will be available to answer questions before we go to listen. Uh, before we go to listen to Alona's pr presentation, I would like to confirm the words about. Well, I have been often uh, thinking about reverse inclusion and how people who uh, cater for the people with special needs feel. I myself run inclusive trainings at the Pushkin uh, Museum and this is one of the most friendly environments uh, for me in terms of the museum attendants, how they are trained, how this space is prepared, how the people with the you know, physical and um, mental uh, specifics are gathered in the museum and how the museum staff react to the projects, even if uh, these are off activities for the, for them rather than their job description. So I I would like to plant that idea in your minds for subsequent discussion. How staff of the institutions take our initiatives about inclusivity uh, in the formation of the social programs. Now I would like to give the floor to Alona, uh, who will probably. Uh, lend us uh, perspective from another side, looking at the physical accessibility. So, good afternoon, I'm happy to see you all. I'm an artist and I will talk to you uh, about two things. 
well, my presentation will be about two parts. So first, I uh, in the first part, I will talk as an expert about accessible environments in so social institutions. And in the second part of my presentation, I will talk to you about my residency at Garage. About a year ago, my colleague Maria Sarachova invited me to be an invited expert in the Tretikov Gallery. I'm uh, not a uh, full-time full employee, yet I'm involved in all the processes that are connected with the physical accessibility and trainings for the employees. So I act as, as an expert for building ethical environment Am, among the staff towards people with disabilities. And right now I'll be focusing on the aspects of the physical environment, what kind of issues we have and uh, what we can resolve and where we should compromise. I, I will begin by the most difficult challenge, uh, museum buildings accessibility. And it's not about the Tretikov Gallery only. It's also about the Pushkin Museum. I'm talking about buildings that are uh, architectural heritage, where we have no control of architecture whatsoever. The, these are re important facilities in terms of preservation of the architectural heritage and at the same time they are as important uh, in terms of their accessibility and for anyone who is born and lives in Russia they, they, they have to know what is happening they have to know about our history and be aware of different aspects of art and culture of the Russian Empire uh, including and there are currently opportunities to uh, re rework the buildings to make them more accessible. However, there is fire security. And as soon as we start talking about certain reconstructions, it turns out that the reconstruction plan may be approved. And while all bureaucratic stages uh, being dealt with, a, a new document is issued on fire security. And in a building that was half repaired, there is a lift, which is not available to wheelchaired because there are no evacuation zones as per the new regulations on fire security. So and I often come across questions from my colleagues, what to do in this case? So we have the lift. Probably we need to sign a certain paper when people assume responsibility for that. And uh, at this point, I normally say that uh, having experience of disability and from uh, my personal security standpoint it's more important for me to stay alive rather than take a peek at unique art objects and involving me as accessibility expert plays an important role I have knowledge of various complications in terms of movement. I have expertise about accessibility for the blind, uh, for the people with autism. And I can get across to my colleagues a representative sample of uh, the conditions where accessibility cannot be provided for, it has to be put up with, it's just a fact of life. 
This is something that we cannot do much about. Thanks to the new technology and thanks to the mediation algorithm, what we can do for the people with uh, mobility limitations, blind, deaf, hearing, visually impaired, can still get in touch with art objects through online broadcasts, for example, on floors above or below that are not accessible in terms of the fire security. And so there is a big potential in that area. With the, with the advent of kinesthetic models, blind and not necessarily the blind, even kids uh, can start you now touching. So there, there were no tactile models uh, about 20 years ago. So they all can get access to the art objects through touch. And within the framework of the institutional program of developing accessibility to uh, architectural heritage uh, buildings, this is always a matter of compromise, investment and sponsorship, because it, it requires a whole lot of money in order to secure the services of uh, architecture experts who could uh, come up with universal design that would allow for accessibility to a big number of low mobile population, be it the, the wheelchair or people who walk on crutches or mothers with uh, little children or someone who use canes to, to walk. So we have very few universal design experts in Russia which, as a result, leads to to the need for substan substantial financing. Uh, if someone asks me uh, whether you whether I would choose to keep the access to to people without any disabilities to an architectural heritage building, or would you close it? Uh, I would say that we need to close it for everyone. People now are more important than the history then. If it's uh, accessible only to a limited circle of people. So I, I am all for democratization of culture. Well, this is open for, for debate, but I believe that we need to be working uh, towards inclusive social programs, uh, museum programs. As for our plans going forward, it's very important to build the routes for guests with various types of disabilities through the buildings that are architectural heritage sites. In the Soviet Union, navigation was not part of the design code of the institution. Uh, right now, many museums develop their own design code for the, for the roots of, of their guests with disabilities. At first sight, uh, it's not something uh, prominent because signs, directions are part of our life. But even a sign of the wheelchair person next to, next to, to a toilet is very important. If you visit this or that museum, you have, for example, a um, cafe, cafeteria, there has to be a lavatory room there for people to be able to wash their hands. If, if the people don't see the signs leading them there, they have to 
or find a staff member to ask for directions, thus spending their resources, their time. Uh, currently in the Tretikovsky gallery, we have been working on that for, for a while, and my colleagues uh, in other institutions work on similar infographics linked to the disability, because inclusivity is a new thing for Russia. In the international experience, as far as I know, this is not something that has been established properly only in the 1980s in Europe and you USA uh, they repeat the school of thought that people with disabilities have the same rights and needs as, as others and I have just learned from my foreign colleagues that they started to look to include artists with disabilities into their exhibitions or demonstrate disability in the objects of art, which is an important step. Talking about building a route, we have two routes that mean specially prepared events, and it's totally okay if these events are not integrated, but segregated, seemingly. For example, uh, Tiflo commenting tours for, for the blind, and there are separate uh, blind guests who come, who are not part of this process, but that if you position uh, this tour as something for, for people with uh, audio descriptive uh, commentary, it can also involve people uh, without blindness. And if people uh, with uh, normal eyesight Hear, the, uh, hear this audio descriptions, they can see the art objects in a different light. And to me, it means that inclusivity opens up new opportunities for people without disabilities too. As for architectural heritage sites, that would be it, I think, on my part. Now I would like to talk about institutions, art and culture linked to the projects of contemporary art. And as an accessibility expert, as an artist, as curator, I would like to say that the that contemporary art has a great emancipatory potential that can influence the perception of the disability and rever rework the social optics of the people with disabilities. Right now, the art the contemporary art that has about 100 years of history goes along a rather hierarchical vertical track when a certain art object is more important than the guest. And if you know the contemporary art, it's often not comprehensible. And this emancipatory effect I mentioned is something when the artists who work on the on the projects take into account the inclusivity challenges and institutional challenges. We'll not spend a lot of time to study the social model of the disability, but still they would be able to come up with the objects and work of the contemporary arts 
art that would be accessible to general public and that would support participatory practices rather than hierarchical and vertical. If there are any questions, I would be happy to expand on that later. I would say a couple of more words as artist in the garage residence where I spent six months close to Bidin Hay, the old Russian exhibition of the economic achievements. So uh, it was a former school or hospital building, I can't remember which it was initially. So uh, curator Ivan Isayev invited me to the residence back then. And the first thing I saw in the residence is uh, the accessible to me toilet. So, and I thought that if, I, if I'm invited, then th there must be a ramp, which isn't always the case, by the way. And I would also like to touch upon one more thing in terms of physical accessibility. It is important for the institution and processes leading to inclusivity in institutions would involve the staff that may have uh, issues with uh, movement, communications, eyesight, hearing. And by doing this, culture would be enriched. And in order to achieve that, we need to create social inclusivity for, for the person to be accepted as part of the group and physical accessibility too. So why I'm telling you this, I was invited to the residence, I agreed, spent six months there, so, so there was some nominal accessibility uh, arrangements there, toilet, shower, because there are people uh, who come from uh, other cities uh, to, to work there, and the studio itself. Lots of statements were made here about working in residences because this is part of the conference program. And I would like to say that to create accessible working places in the residence, uh, toilet rooms is not where it stops. It's important for the residents to have access, better access to food for people who are in the wheelchairs or who are blind. And it's very important to understand that there are different levels of, of needs. For example, uh, in normal life, I'm, I'm okay taking care of myself. And if we're talking about new residences, it's very important to plan that the cooking area is accessible. Let me give you an interesting example of the garage residence. So there is a big table in the dining area with lots of chairs around it. It's a very hospitable place receiving many artists, we would often have lunches and dinners, but there were always chairs around it. Chairs were different. Most of them were very heavy, and every time I had to move the chair away from the table. And often it was very difficult because uh, people were tightly packed around the table and it took some time for the artists who were there together with me that uh, 
there has to be a space for me without a chair. And in this case, this case underlines the importance of the programs being orientated towards not just the exhibitions and guests, but also artists. They have to include some basic knowledge about inclusivity and accessibility. If you're talking about an open call or an event about communication between different artists on a project, it's highly important to reach out to the artists who are not aware of that, that the mediator curator has a knowledge of inclusivity. My research experience shows that over time, museum institutions, the biggest ones, I'm not sure whether financing would be enough, but they move towards maximum inclusivity. And in these conditions, artists, the most prominent ones, uh, have to take that into account. There'll be kinesthetic models for, for their uh, pieces of art. They need to be aware of that. That would be, thank you. I would like to come I would like to come back to a topic that has been mentioned by Alona uh, social uh, culture social and cultural inclusivity so when talking about artists who um, should remember about inclusivity so Alona mentioned about new possibilities for people without disabilities for expanding the artistic space so Anna Chaban uh, who's a curator um, from the social projects department and a curator at Uyazdovsky Castle, Center for Contemporary Art. So she's going to speak inclusivity in a broad sense, including people without disabilities. So please bring Anna online. Can we see her on the screen, please? Yeah, hello, hello everyone. Всем добрый день, здравствуйте. Всем добрый. Okay, so as you said, I present. Итак, как вы уже сказали, я представляю. Wait a minute, I try to share my presentation. Я пытаюсь вывести на экран свою презентацию. Okay, so as you as you Итак, said, I will, сказали, uh, I will speak more about the uh, um, inclusiveness in the sense of um, somebody. I uh, say that it's тех, not only кто, access to, uh, to the arts, but в доступе к искусству, но и Excuse me, can I turn off the translation in somehow because I, I can't hear my voice, so it's technical. Uh, Right now, okay. Uh, so uh, previously, somebody said uh, very nice that uh, that inclusiveness uh, is not only access to the art, but uh, first of all, access to each other. So, so uh, for my project, I try to I try to uh, do it. So, I will speak about the project. Um, City Garden Yazov, which I did develop. Uh, since 2015 and and i had to finish it uh, to 2019 so here's a, a short description uh, of the project so um so the project uh, uh, was dedicated to the area and people who can meet in the area in front of the castle or around the castle uh, maybe a few words about the our, our, about the castle itself uh, here you we see the two pictures so uh, so uh, castle is situated in the very center of the of the city of warsaw and surrounded by uh, different institutions but also surrounded by uh, beautiful greenery uh, areas. Uh, 
and uh, but uh, what was my uh, concern uh, that uh, that the uh, green area or park so called uh, around uh, this castle um, I found as a no place yeah uh, especially comparing to other uh, surrounded uh, institution like a botanic garden like a, like a wooden houses settlement where it's full of uh, activists and guerrilla gardening um, so it was uh, kind of a looking for identity of this uh, place but in the same time i try to i try to bring different different communities different group uh, visitors of the castle uh, and also users uh, uh, of, of this space to to create this uh, this uh, place uh, um, together so back to the back to the uh, description so it was the interdisciplinary long-term project yeah, because uh, i collaborated not only with artists uh, but with uh, uh, different uh, 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 creators i could say uh, like architects uh, sociologists uh, botanists educators uh, of course uh, public yes yeah, so or users of of the place um to and we were uh, exercising different um function for 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 the place uh like uh, do can we make a sport in this place? Can we uh, can we make a research, a botanical research in this space? Can we change the architecture? Can we make it more accessible or um, visible? Actually, visible for for um, just normal Warsaw inhabitants. So uh, uh, um, it has five uh, uh, editions yeah uh, well as i said where we practice various functions and uh, here you see like a uh, uh, five five uh, editions uh, dedicated to different function collaborated with different uh, groups artists architects yeah so uh, i just show you very briefly uh, year by year how how we work so we started uh, with mapping the neighborhoods together with a group uh, architectural uh, group centrala so we made uh, several walks uh, around the neighborhood uh, mostly through architecture through botanic we get knowledge about the um, about the sound of the space about the uh, nature about the architecture previous and current and um, and also it was a first uh, step uh, to get um, closer to our uh, institutional neighbor hoods um we even um uh, established kind of a coalition or neighborhood uh, uh so-called uh Uyazdowski neighborhood uh where uh, surrounded institution uh, collaborate with us and together we try to promote our uh, parks, our approach to 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 green in a in the middle of a city, uh, and we started to exchange the the knowledge, the public. Uh, it's very important that it's very various uh, area. I mean, there is a totally different institution, not only art institution like Yazowski Castle or like a theatrical institute, but also there is a botanic garden royal bath garden with totally different monumental i could say energy on the other side uh, uh, it's it's cutted by the motor road and the other side it's a uh, uh, of this green area it's a, as i said wooden uh, houses settlement so it's like a, it, it was a provisional uh, settlement for um which established after second world war uh, but it still exists and it's a it's a communal uh, place where uh, where is a lot of uh, headquarters for ngos uh, activists artists uh, so totally different energy as i said they, they work mostly uh, 
like a bottom up uh, with uh, guerrilla gardening and this kind of um, low budget i could say uh, projects um and also uh, nearby a uh, lot of embassies we also collaborated with them so as you see it's totally totally um full of different energies uh, area so first we mapped the uh, the the neighborhood and we attempted the first um, uh, prototype, I could say. We work together with uh, with our um, uh, public, with young uh, designers. So through first year, uh, um, we work together with uh, with young artists, designers, uh, to find a um, different arrangement for the park. As I said, it's uh, uh, it's it, it's kind of a no place because. Uh, um because uh, for many um for many um people uh, living in in a city is uh, uh, found uh, only as a transit road so the fragment of greenery which is around uh, around the castle um even it's not not noticeable I mean, it's not visible. So, so first attempt uh, was to create a totally different uh, communication road, totally different uh, path, uh, not next to the. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you see it, but here on this model, you see that the path is uh, between the buildings. It's a wooden one. So, so we check uh, how it could uh, work. So, uh, maybe I should mention that the the, the first uh, assumption was that okay, we can't do anything for for longer because the all the rain is under um, uh, conservation protection. I mean, it has a, a preservation orders. So we could do only temporary things, but it was also a, a benefit because we could uh, we could build a prototype, yeah, and and then check if it works on or not. So first attempt was how uh, we check the, the the new communication in the park, uh, try to um, cha change the uh, perspective uh, of uh, of uh, visitors and not uh, and try to um, force them to notice that there are also um, trees uh, uh, and so on. So um, next, uh, uh, so here we've got the the real path. Uh, so it was like a half kilometer long um, crossing the park uh, made out of wood. So we collaborate together with a Georgian artist Gela Patashuri and Polish architect um, uh, Eva on the right side uh, on the right picture you see there is also a um, um, uh, cinema place yeah uh, so it was not only a, a, a new uh, communication path but also also together with uh, our uh, young designers we've choose the best place for screenings yeah in the park because uh, yeah, i mean park has tradition to, to make uh, summer cinemas uh next year uh we uh, decided to uh, uh collaborate with uh, uh, urban sports communities uh, I, I call them like this uh, so addition called sporty uh, you see here uh, parker uh, communities uh, we also got uh, skateboarders uh, here it's a fragment of a reenactment of a cube race uh, game so so uh, I try to I try to Put some move uh, into the into the space because, as I said, it it was move, but it was only like a transit movement. So uh, uh, I try to drag people and and force them to stop. I could say, yeah. So uh, so it was a kind of a tournament. Uh, maybe you know uh, the, the program. Uh, sports without barrier uh, 
uh, uh, which happened uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s in, in Europe. It was also a TV broadcast, but also a, a real tournament in a small uh, cities of Europe and the, the common uh, slogan, uh, United uh, uh, Europe, yeah. So like a very funny tournament between architecture, monuments, um, uh, sport and art. Uh, um, very often very similar similar to to the fluxus uh, movement i could say um so here's uh, skateboarders so the tournament um competition mind the gap so in the uh, background you see the castle um, uh, uh next year we try to focus more on um, on uh, um, botany uh, on the trees because it was also the period so we try to also ask for the, for the current issues it was also the year when when in poland the uh, environmental law uh, changed uh, for a short time and it was so easy to cut trees for on on the private properties but unfortunately it it was kind of a m massive cutting trees in a, in the cities so also a lot of trees were cut in our park um, and and uh, uh, the official narration was that that trees can be dangerous because branches uh, could fall down and and uh, damage you know uh, um, cars or injure people uh, so we tried to together with artists botanists uh, or also befriended uh, botanic garden uh, we tried to uh, um, put a new uh, narration that uh, it's our future uh, uh, that uh, trees are not only uh, danger but also uh, something beautiful something which gives us uh, I mean, another uh, another uh, um, benefits, let, let's say it. Uh, so here you see the platform, uh, uh, observation platform, which was not for for observing the view, but more to be inside the trees. So, so to look closer to the trees, observe uh, birds, uh, also different um, mm, mm, sickness uh, in the trees. But uh, and uh, it uh, it wasn't. I mean, it was quite monumental. Uh, uh, because at the highest uh, level, seven meter high, uh, but was totally hidden in a, in the trees and was uh, built uh, um, according the the um, landscape. Um, so yeah, some some picture um, from inside. Uh, and together, uh, I mean, the, the, the public program was uh, uh, was field observation uh, uh, together with uh, with botanics. So we observe uh, different species. Yeah, I could say that we we try to develop the communication with non-human beings. Yeah, uh, mushrooms. Uh, we observe birds. We observe. Um, um, urban uh, animals who, who are also the um, yeah and the last uh, last edition we finally be built um, um, I could say a water garden but it was uh, subversive in some height uh, um, it was uh, it was called dystopia uh, so also show uh, show uh, different dangers uh, for wetlands and nature uh, in, a, in a contemporary world and and uh, also we uh, we focus on a, a wetland in uh, uh, Warsaw, uh, architecture mentioned before, architecture uh, group uh, Centrala, 
uh, prepare a series of walks through Warsaw wetlands uh, and prepare a model, which we see uh, here. Um, yeah, so, so, so the last edition was more specifically uh, dedicated to, to water. And uh, uh, I did mention that the title was Care About Water and Bath with Friends. Uh, so um, uh, as you as you uh, hear or see, uh, so the project was a mix of uh, connecting uh, different strategies uh, to to make this area. Uh, around the castle more accessible for for different groups but for um, mostly for users of uh, of this uh, of the park of this place uh, uh, and uh, uh, inhabitants of Warsaw um, um, yeah uh, <laughs> So thank you. Yeah, thank you for listening. Oh, спасибо, Анна. Это очень интересно было сейчас. It was very interesting to see. Well, uh, I got your presentation tonight, and I realized that I visited Warsaw in 2018, and I had a chance to walk along those paths. Uh, in that park, and I didn't understand, I didn't realize it was about inclusion, about inclusivity, but what Anna uh, is speaking about is something very important, because when we talk about inclusivity, we generally talk about uh, beneficiaries who have some disabilities, who are most vulnerable, but we need to speak about inclusion in the widest sense, and we can speak about the space as an accessible place. Now we're in Vuxa, and, um, well, I think we have uh, a lot of questions about how VIXA has become so accessible. Why uh, are we now so in VIXA? And our last presentation uh, um, uh, will be dedicated to VIXA. And afterwards, we will have a discussion. We will have a uh, chat. And you can ask your questions in the chat. So now we are having a joint presentation by... Um, Two more speakers, uh, Marina Patanina and Natalia Golubeva. Golubeva, could you please bring their presentation on the screen? Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about the local context. So Vixa is a monotown in the Nizhny Novgorod region, surrounded by forests and lakes. Its population is 50,000 people. It's a town of metallurgy, graffiti and art objects. Since 2018, OMK Uchastia Charity Foundation has been implementing a project aimed to socialize people with disabilities entitled Vuxa Accessible. Its goal is to provide people with special needs an opportunity to take an active part in the life of the town. The main project platform is the Vuxa Metallurgical Plant Museum. Uh, the museum workers developed eight inclusive tours around the park, the town and the production facilities as well as around 30 standing exhibitions of the museum. Blind and visually impaired visitors are offered a variety of tours with audio descriptions. Deaf and acoustically challenged visitors are offered 23 video guides in the Russian gesture language on standing exhibitions of the museum and art objects. The museum team has a qualified audio descriptive expert. The staff takes regular trainings to learn how to work with people with special needs. To provide unrestricted access to the exhibitions, the museum has a caterpillar stair lift that helps take people in wheelchairs uh, up to the second floor. Since 2018, there have been over 200 tours for 1,600 visitors with disabilities. Since 2011, Vixa arranges the urban culture festival known as Art of Rock. Over that period of time, we created 11 art yards and over 100 art objects. The 2021 festival saw 15 inclusive events that were visited by over 100 participants. Guests with special needs were provided with translation into Russian gesture language, audio description, architectural accessibility. 
During the 2019 festival, the Vixa Metallurgical Plant opened the first Russian industrial street art park based at the running production facility. The park displays a work by Alexei Luka, the world's biggest wall painting made by one painter, Misha Most, two frescoes by Eric Bulatov, and a unique Shuhov's Tower. The Vixa plant actively promotes industrial tourism. Feel the beauty and distinctive character of Vixa. Come and visit us. Welcome. Let me say a couple of words about how we started this project. It started in 2018. The OMK Uchastia Charity Foundation invited me to uh, arrange this inclusive and uh, inclusivity and accessibility program. Well, there were some preconditions because the OMK Uchastia Foundation um, used to um, carry out various uh, charity projects. They aim at inclusivity. They arranged the so-called um, kindness lessons at schools. Uh, they were arranging art therapy lessons, uh, but they uh, focused on inclusivity only later. So in 2018, in 2018, we started working with the museum staff because it was very important to ensure a good dialogue, the, the, the right communication. Um, uh, well, uh, it has been mentioned that some words are no longer used because it is considered to be incorrect or um, politically incorrect, let's say. So we um, arranged different uh, models um, for changing the terminology. We describe the new terms that now should be used, that are allowed to be used. And in our educational practices, we started the program that was called the first steps. Uh, it took place in 2018 and we were making, well, uh, small steps. We made uh, four interactive models. We talked about audio descriptions, about the principles of audio descriptions. We had a training at the Pushkin Museum um, of Fine Arts. We made a, a sensor accessibility map. We had lectures from experts. Uh, we invited uh, an expert on social stories. We had an expert on audio descriptions. So we talked about the need to create various kinesthetic models. And some of the kinesthetic models were made here in Vixa and the museum staff uh, were involved into the process. We also started uh, the so-called kinesthetic um, lectures. So it was important to train people who have never uh, worked with inclusivity before. So they needed to establish communication with the people who would come to the museum. So the museum staff um, sh would not feel uncomfortable. So this is a very sensitive issue. Some of, some members of the staff were afraid of working with the uh, with the visitors with disabilities. So there was a feeling of awkwardness. And in order to remove that feeling, uh, we arranged those cinema lectures. And we discussed that with the people and we invited people with disabilities to those lectures. Then we got the uh, presidential grant and it helped us to make more uh, kinesthetic models. We also bought uh, special um, accessories for wheelchairs and um, well uh, Vixa is not uh, really accessible physically accessible so um, we, we use that uh, those devices to somehow remove this um, lack of access physical accessibility in Vixa so, so those um, electric devices helped people on wheelchairs to move fast around the, the, the town We also arranged various educational trainings and we taught them how to make audio comments, how to arrange tours uh, for mentally impaired people. 
And uh, in 2020, uh, we uh, arranged a sociological survey because we wanted to know how people living in Vixa, uh, well, how they felt about um, our um, our program. Um, we surveyed both people with disabilities and without, and we found out an interesting thing. So the initiatives of the museum started a kind of a wave, uh, a process that increased the level of inclusivity in Vixa, and people with disabilities um, provided a very positive feedback, and they said that they uh, increased their activity, uh, well, uh, they, the accessibility to various places increased, but still, well, there is a still a big gap between people with disabilities and without. Still, there are some barriers. Uh, I wouldn't say these are cultural barriers, but these are like stereotype-based um, uh, 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 barriers. So people with disabilities still feel that barrier, unless you arrange special events to break those barriers, like joint excursions or cinema lectures or conferences. So on an annual basis, we arranged conferences on inclusivity and accessibility, and people could meet each other there and they could break the barriers. But um, but on average, such barriers do exist still, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, people without disabilities were saying that, well, uh, people with disabilities do not have a very good level of life in Vixa. So it turned out that people with disabilities had a more positive outlook on their life. So the local community of people with disabilities are very, um, is very active. So people are very active. Uh, we had a community of mothers with uh, children, uh, with mentally impaired children, uh, children with autism disorders. And now we have a charity foundation called uh, Sosvezdia, or Constellation, uh, which aims to help people, and uh, mostly children with autism. So they arrange various uh, socialization projects, art therapy uh, 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 lessons, so uh, the, the people with disabilities in Vixa are mostly elderly people and uh, they are quite few and sometimes they're not much interested in taking part in very social and cultural events in the city, in the town. So the, the community of deaf people uh, is also quite active. They visit various museum activities and the uh, gesture translators also came to us, but the Art of Rock Festival was not positively uh, accepted because the translators of the Russian gesture lecture uh, used to work uh, used to work in the church and uh, it was a challenge for her to uh, work at, uh, at such uh, a uh, contemporary art uh, festival. So she was used to church services and she was not interested in working for the art festival for the Astro festival of contemporary art nevertheless the community of deaf people is mostly active and they were the first to attend the production facility that was our first tour for um, for the deaf for the deaf people then we involved other communities but the community of deaf people were the first to support our initiative. Uh, we made several tours to the production facilities and the first uh, difficult thing was to um, persuade uh, the leaders of the production facility to arrange such a project. Well, yesterday there were two tours to the production facility. You see, even it is difficult for even for people without disabilities to get to the production facility. So just imagine how difficult it is to bring people there, uh, people with disabilities or without disabilities, inclusive groups. So it was a challenge and the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the management, the top management of the facility were afraid about bringing people to the production facility because this is like um, super high responsibility. But now this is 
these excursions, these tours take place on a regular basis. And so this um, led to a new project um, uh, related to uh, employing uh, people with disabilities in VUXA. Natalia will talk about that in greater detail. Well, I like our project, uh, which is four years long already. So we see that it is a, a very, um, it is very efficient, and it it shows that uh, we started when we were very uh, unsure about the possible results, but now we see that the museum is independent in arranging independent their own programs and they promote inclusivity and I would like to give the floor to Natalia the head of the museum who will tell us more about uh, the project uh, at the moment and its future prospects could you please bring my presentation on the screen so the first steps are the most difficult ones and uh, it is a big challenge for people without disabilities to cross the, ba the barriers and to establish communication with the people with disabilities. So originally, the museum staff um, is constantly changing. Therefore, that communication training is required on a constant basis, on a regular basis. So we trained uh, the museum staff that were involved in the project, including me, and uh, and four more um, tour guides. So we were trained at, uh, at different museums that already had those inclusive practices, Garage, Tretyakov Gallery, the Arsenal uh, in Nizhny Novgorod. So it was very difficult for the museum staff to get involved into this uh, project. But so far, at the moment, I think that the museum staff oh, is interested in the project and they like what they do. And I would like you to uh, to tell you more about the inclusive practices that are carried out at the museum um, together with OM Kauchastia Charity Foundation. So the strategic idea behind is the inclusive transformation of the whole town of Vixa. Um, not only museums and cultural institutions. So cultural institutions and museums are not only museums, but it also the ex libris space next to the museum and uh, VUXA Art Residence, which is currently one of the co-hosts of our conference. In the long run, we expect VUXA to become a, an inclusive town. The strategic partner is the administration of the um, urban district of Vixa. And well, the important precondition is the local community involvement or engagement. So it shows the strategic matrix um, of development in different areas, in different directions. So we see that the OMK Chastie uh, Charity Foundation works in three directions, employment, that was mentioned by Marina Culture. And this is the, mu the museum is responsible for that and education. Speaking about uh, employment. Um, so in this area, we see that we establish a, a, a website for people to find jobs and also a website for um, uh, for, for a, a kind of a cent, an employment center for people with disabilities and various um, workshops and webinars for employers who would like to hire people with disabilities. So speaking in terms of uh, culture, well, um, we understand that by 2023, we plan a joint program together with the local administration to increase accessibility of cultural institutions. Well, this is ambitious indeed, because uh, 2021 is almost over. Uh, so we plan to achieve this goal. And finally, education, we involve kids with disabilities um, into different um, 
clubs into different uh, well, um, centers. So we make uh, educational um, facilities more accessible for such children. We arrange the so-called kindness lessons at schools. And we also develop um, programs together with the local administration on developing inclusive infrastructure. So on this slide, you can have a look at our goals. So by 2023, uh, we plan to set up a regional resource inclusive center. So we are on track already to uh, achieve the goal. Um, cultural um, spaces inside the museum. We try to uh, ensure complete architectural accessibility, full accessibility. And the art residence uh, now is getting a new, is, is about to get a new building. So um, two cultural institutions uh, are based at uh, the facilities that are considered to be the objects of cultural heritage. So it poses certain difficulties, but still we've made uh, quite a bit progress in this. Uh, well, training um, training um, the museum staff to uh, communicate with people with disabilities is a very important goal. Uh, it's a very important task. We also need to train uh, experts, professionals who could um, do audio uh, descriptions, um, uh, translate using the Russian gesture language and easy to read texts. So we uh, arrange regular trainings. Uh, we now have a professional um, audio description expert. This is the second expert in the Nizhny Novgorod region, and we're very happy about that. So this year, we also uh, um, hired a person who um, who is working on inclusive practices. This is Karina Krohina. She's in the hall right now. I find it important because now we have an expert, a professional, who works in this direction. Uh, we need to uh, arrange events for a wider audience. Uh, we need to multiply our experiences uh, in all the cultural institutions uh, in Vuxa and in the region as well. So last year and this year, we tried to adapt um, well, the most significant uh, exhibitions and cultural events for people with disabilities. And we involved the expert council that consisted of representatives of the community of people with disabilities. So uh, our goal was uh, to introduce any changes only in collaboration with people with disabilities. So our first big project that started in 2021, uh, we were assisted by Gulfstream um, Charity Foundation, and this project is called The Art of Being Together. It, uh, so it was the pandemic time, that way. that's why it was so difficult, and there were very few visitors, there were strict uh, restrictions. Still, we decided to take the risk because the project is uh, exciting. Uh, so it, um, it shows 12 um, um, art objects, kinesthetic, sound, interactive installations, and uh, video art objects. And uh, those uh, works of art were made by uh, the people of Vuxa, uh, people with disabilities and without. And uh, the um, exhibition was visited by uh, 400 people, not much. Uh, but as I've mentioned, uh, well, during the lockdown, so we started in September 2020, so during the lockdown, it was pretty difficult to invite people. But still, we managed to adapt uh, the Art of Rock Festival for the needs of people with disabilities. So this festival takes place in Vixa for more than 10 years. So we adapted uh, the program of the festival. We arranged 15 inclusive um, events from the major program. And there were over 100 participants um, with disabilities. Uh, in October, we started one more project. 
which is the adaptation of the tour called, um, uh, which is called uh, Schwarzwald or Black Forest. Um, and we uh, s created easy to read texts. And um, Olga Zaharova uh, is uh, the audio description expert who helped us to do that. Yesterday, we um, opened another tour, another exhibition, which is called Shuhov, the formula of Arch architecture. So I hope all of you know that we have two art objects made by Shuhov, uh, the water pipe tower um, set up at the Vuxa uh, metallurgical plant. So that's why bringing this exhibition to Vuxa was very important uh, for all of us. So we uh, carried out this project with the State Architecture Museum named after Shusev and the OMK Uchastia Charity Foundation. So uh, the staff of the Shusev Museum and uh, the members of the Charity Foundation helped us a lot. So uh, again, uh, we prepared easy to read texts for six objects, uh, an audio guide with audio descriptions and five kinesthetic models. So at the beginning of December, we plan online meetings and a small conference with uh, the nearby regional museums. We're going to exchange experience, exchange best practices. We also are going to invite the Polytechnic Museum uh, of Moscow. And we also invite the Arsenal in Nizhny Novgorod. We plan to develop our own um, workshop in order to improve understanding of disabilities and inclusivity in order to um, well, spread our experience to um, town cultural institutions and regional cultural institutions. We um, make new tours and we arrange new events. We improve the tools, the accessibility tools uh, involving the members of the expert council. Uh, so when I speak about the expert council, I mean people from the community of people with disabilities, of course. And we also plan to launch a program uh, for school trend, for school children so as to improve their understanding of disabilities. So the children from very early age uh, would uh, know, know more about disabilities and would, that, so that they could act, uh, later act as volunteers. So, we so um i started thinking about uh, such an exhibition some 10 years ago because when my my child um, my child with a disability was about to go to school and together with artist sonia gorina we made pictures and texts for the exhibition and this is the exhibition that is touring from uh, an institution to an institution then it uh, came back to vixa and it was exhibited in in one of the parks. So it consists of stands with pictures and children were taken there and they were told about uh, that people are different, that there is nothing bad about it. That, that, that's what life is, that there, that there are different people and you can use different means of communication so that nobody uh, would be excluded from communication. And now we decided to uh, start this exhibition again so that children from uh, primary school uh, could um, learn more about disabilities. Probably this will be a touring exhibition. It will tour from school to school so that uh, school, children, school children from primary, primary school could learn more about disabilities. Thank you, Natalia and Maria. Um, um, let me stop you here because we need to to bear in mind that the next session starts in seven minutes. So I urge you to ask questions. Um, uh, but since we are pressed for time, uh, since we are all here and uh, we are staying here for uh, today and tomorrow, uh, probably those who work with inclusivity have questions or comments or remarks 
that's why I suggest exchanging our opinions during the coffee break or at lunch so as not to um, um, so as not to uh, well break our timeline summing up I would like uh, to say that inclusive aspect this is uh, the topic of our today's uh, uh, session inclusive aspect of forming institutional programs I think we talked about representation uh, which is a very important ex inclusive aspect, uh, physical accessibility, but also social accessibility, including for people without disabilities and working with place and space. Aliona and Yevgenia and now Natalia uh, spoke, um, spoke, uh, said that when we um, improve inclusivity we need to involve beneficiaries into the process so we need to collaborate to cooperate with people and help people with disabilities get employed and bringing those people into the expert council and um, we need to use their expertise so any institutional inclusion is important and aliona uh, talked about her art residence experience and said that uh, members of cultural institutions and museums, um, so it's good when they um, take tr trainings and when they're inclusive, friendly, and artists who do art also need to be inclusive. So I would like to thank all of you. Uh, thank you for waking up early and joining us during this morning session. Uh, we can share the presentations if our colleagues do not mind. And those who joined us online, uh, we're happy to take questions and we can share contacts of those who were online. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll see you again during the coffee break or at lunchtime. Thank you. Thank you.